Bonjour, Wachia Kwe. Euh, je vais juste prendre un petit moment en français parce que je vais faire ma présentation en anglais, mais pour remercier le groupe Wapachkus pour votre présentation parce que j'ai maintenant l'honneur, la chance de travailler avec le groupe Wapachkus dans mon rôle professionnel à la SNAP Québec, à la Société pour la nature et les parcs. Puis la semaine prochaine, en fait, j'aurai l'occasion de, de travailler, de, de présenter sur le, le travail que je fais avec Wapachkus à la conférence de l'UNESCO. Donc, merci beaucoup pour votre présentation. Um, so, I will, I know we're behind schedule, so I was instructed to do a, a very short presentation, but I just want to take you back. Um, oh, sorry, I have a one slide. Okay. I want to take you back a few years prior to the creation of one of the protected areas that's actually currently established in EUST, the Bukumshumau Maduskau. Um, Biodiversity Reserve. Um, I want to take you back actually to maybe 2002 to 2003 to the creation of a, a partnership um, that led to the creation of this uh, Biodiversity Reserve. It's a very special partnership. Well, because like for me, it's through this partnership that I had the honor of, of starting to work in, in 2003 with the Womenji uh, community. But it's also very special because uh, this project was very innovative and uh, a precursor to many of the current uh, pro like IPCA projects in many ways. Um, this is a partnership that was initiated prior to many of the mainstream discussions about ICCAs and IPCAs in Canada. Um, and it, it emerged at a time when uh, some people in, in Womenji, including Rodney Mark, Uh, who's sitting here, uh, and who was then the deputy chief of Womenji, um, were really struggling with the question of balancing development in the territory and creating jobs for youth and protecting the land in order to protect the Cree way of life. Um, so in discussions with, with, with Colin and, and other pe people in the community, th this um, partnership emerged between the community and a group of academics. Um, what was very interesting about this, this partnership was that it was interdisciplinary and, and um, our colleague from New Zealand two days ago talked about the importance in New Zealand of having interdisciplinary teams and this is exactly what this partnership was about. It was both interdisciplinary and inter or multicultural because it involved um, academic researchers but also community members. Um, of course, some challenges arise when you have Cree hunters, women, elders sitting at the table with uh, biologists, geologists, geographers, political scientists, philosophers. So you can imagine some of the discussions and, and, and um, that went around. Uh, but also there were tremendous opportunities that arose from, from these discussions and, and this partnership and the complementarity of approaches and interpretations and visions really um, came out. Uh, some of the projects that uh, this partnership undertook are, are highlighted here. Um, documentation of beaver ecology, for example, documentation of the significance of, of, of certain places, of the stewardship approaches, um, amongst others, archaeological projects. Uh, and in this partnership, the local knowledge, the local vision, the local um, perspective and interest really guided how the research was uh, undertaken. And similarly, I think that the, the Western science really supported um, the more indigenous like uh, approaches to worship knowledge and, and, and interests. Uh, relationships developed. Um, researchers and community members spent a lot of time together like in the bush working um, at uh, developing this vision uh, on drawing maps, for example, too. Uh, and this really, like from, from this work, this, this common work emerged a vision for a large protected area that encompassed two river watersheds, um, two uh, family-based trap lines or hunting territories, as well as portions of, of other territories. And it really emerged that the Cree stewardship, Cree customary stewardship, was to be the, the framework for, for this protected area and, and the protection of a way of life. 
And I think that through this project and through this partnership emerged, um, there was space that was created for local voices in arenas where they were still quite marginalized, that is in conservation structures within the Quebec government. Um, and I just want to highlight too the, the role of, of NGOs that came in a little bit later in, in this partnership and in the process uh, and that helped really help overcome some of the political challenges that arose. Uh, for example, SNAP Quebec was uh, key in um, bringing to the table the right people from the government and kind of bringing to the, their attention this project. Um, and Hugo Lapointe from uh, Quebec, uh, Pour que le Québec et meilleure mine was also um, central to helping r remove some of the mining claims and, and some of the challenge that, that came on, on that side. So the outcome from this partnership was a legally protected, protected area, a biodiversity reserve, like a, that's a provincial status that really overlays what, what we can call today an IPCA or an ICCA, where people still continue, as, as Mandy was highlighting, a lot of people still continue to hunt, trap, you know, pick berries, uh, fish there. So thank you, since committing. Merci.